Okay, great question. So, so when, when did the coin drop? When did I actually realize that I was doing things wrong? Um, so uh, I used to work for a company here in Malmö called TAT, the Astonishing Tribe, and we were known for being sort of innovators in user interfaces and create fantastic mobile user experiences. Um, and I think we were really great at coming up with ideas and, and visualizing them and, you know, we inspired uh, people with the work we did, but we didn't really create products that we released to the to real people that they could use. Um, but actually then that company got acquired by, by BlackBerry, uh, which brought in uh, a lot of new tasks for us and a lot of new colleagues, like Philip here. Uh, I mean, wouldn't have met you without that, that happening. And we started working together with people who had the title user experience researchers. And they opened up my eyes a lot to, to how early you should start t testing your ideas on real people. And around the same time, I mean, I heard so much about this startup literature and, and people that I, I worked with and, and, and uh, you know, clever people that I admire started talking about these books. And I thought, okay, I'll read them, you know, I'll read the lean startup. <laughs> And it is, it is a bit of an eye-opener, I think, uh, reading those books. So even if you're not in a startup, I mean, you can, you can read books and get inspired. And I think I kind of like these methods that are so you know, simple that you can start trying them. So just this fact that, that the people who do it right are exposing their ideas to real people and, are, and allow themselves to fail, you know, that's probably my... <laughs> my uh, that, that was the moment. That is, I don't know how many years ago that is, but... Since then, I've been trying to do innovation differently. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a broad question, how to engage with people. But it's a, it's a good, yeah, so I think, I think again, like thinking about it as it doing, going through different phases is, is a good, good way to start. Because in the beginning, you do your early visualizations and whatever, like when you just have an idea, that's when you're in the exploration phase. And you should engage with people then too. But then you should be really good at listening and, and you know, you should be willing to throw away your idea if people if you don't get any good response from people you know just throw it throw it away and try something else but at some point you sort of reach you've started to invest really a lot in your idea and you really believe in it hopefully you believe in it for the reason that people you have done your research right and then you go into more <laughs> of pitching mode and you actually that's when you do your 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 really high end visualizations and create some really beautiful content and try to pitch and sell things but again, you should be willing to fail that too. You know, if you do your very best at selling something and you fail, you know, just realize that it might not be such a good idea anyway and, and move on. So, so you engage with people all the time, but you, I think you do it in different ways depending on how, what phase you're in, right? But have you, have you done trying to make people give their time? Yes, for sure. And I think, I think part of that is trying to find the right target audience. So you should, in the beginning, you go out in the city and just talk to people randomly maybe. And, and that's really hard. You interrupt people, but you have to you know, find good places to talk to people. When you stand in line that, in the, in the consum or whatever, maybe you can talk to people. I don't know where it's easy to start a, a spontaneous conversation, but just a very basic research in the beginning can be painful because you get rejected so much. You, you're interrupting people and, and they don't want to talk to you. But then once you start seeing a little bit of a pattern, you know, the people who actually do stay and talk to you are dog owners. So, then you can start narrowing down your search a bit. And then you start talking mainly to dog owners, and then it might be easier to grab their attention. And then you realize that it's usually people uh, who are retired dog people and their dog owners, they are even more engaged. And then you sort of narrow down your search, and then hopefully it will get easier and easier for you to do these conversations. And that's how you can find your target group. But in the beginning, it's, it's really hard. And, and I push, I push uh, all the teams that I coach really hard to get out, and, and they hate it, but, uh, but it, <laughs> it helps. One more question? Yeah. So, so I'm thinking about uh, how, when, when to know when to trust the response you get from the, the people you interview. So if, 
you ask people, like, do you want to have a self-driving car? Yeah. They might tell you, no, I do not, because I'm afraid of technology, I want to drive myself. But so they're not really ready for the solution. Mm. So you see, when you make big leaps in technology, uh, the people might not be ready for the solution. Do you, do you see? Yeah. Like, how do you know to actually trust the response you get from the from users? So how do you know how to trust the response you get from users? Yeah, it's hard when people say no and you think that they might not mean no. <laughs> no, but, uh, no, but see, I mean, to be, to be honest, I think these methods work best when you're not doing these big leaps. When you're doing these huge leaps of faith, it's really hard um, for, for, um, to know what people really want. Like, especially, um, there's this famous quote which people think was Henry Ford who said it. Apparently it wasn't, but I mean, if you ask people what they want, they would have said faster horses. They would never say they wanted cars. Um, but um, I, think, I think, again, like when you talk about the solution, it's, you, it's enough that you find a few people who get it and get excited by it, and then you can start working with those. So I think, again, like instead of standing there trying to convince people and pitch, you should probably just move on until you find somebody who, who actually is, will, is willing to, to engage with you. I think that might be better, a better way to spend your time.